Welcome back to Autism Live. Uh, we haven't had a chance to do autism in the classroom recently, um, so I wanted to give sort of a packet of things to get to the end of the year um, from the perspective of the parent and, uh, and the perspective of the teacher because I think it's a collaborative effort. But we are at that really interesting tipping point in the year where a lot of you who have just had spring break or about to have spring break and then you know we're going to come back to school and depending on the child's age there's going to be a certain amount of standardized testing that's going to happen and that's going to be rough right for a kiddo that's on the autism spectrum and then you're depending on the age and the uh, you know ability of the kiddo you're moving into a period of time where they're wrapping up the end of the year and there may be finals or final projects or both right so um, it's right around the time of year though where you might find yourself having your last parent-teacher conference of the year. So there are a couple of things that I, that I want to point out to you because um, I know we get to this point of the year and everybody's exhausted, right? The teachers are exhausted, the staff is exhausted, the kids are exhausted, it's starting to be nice outside. Everybody wants to be outside. Everybody wants to, you know, blow all the dust of the winter off because uh, I know many of you live in places where it's been a hard, hard winter, right? So um, we got to make sure that reinforcers are in place for everyone, for the teachers and for the kiddos. So if you're a parent, make sure it's right around this time of year that it's teacher appreciation or make it that way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If there isn't somebody at your school that's doing that, make it that way. And it doesn't have to be ginormous and you don't have to break the bank to do it. Teachers, and I'm a former teacher, teachers appreciate knowing that somebody cares. It could be as simple as getting, uh, you know, one candy bar that costs a dollar and sending a note with it and saying thank you, right? And I'm, I'm a person who's horribly allergic to chocolate and occasionally somebody would give me a candy bar and I would be so touched and so thrilled because I knew that they cared and that they were paying attention and that I must be making an impact if they took the time to go buy a candy bar and send a, and send a handwritten note, right? Because that's old fashioned and it's, but it's meaningful, right? It means somebody cares. And you know, and I would happily give the candy bar to somebody else, spread the joy, right? I didn't eat the candy bar, but it was still a happy thing. And if you don't have the dollar to do a candy bar, and believe me, I've been there, I've been, there have been times when I didn't have a dollar for a candy bar, write the note. Write the note um, and, and send it and say, I just want to let you know we deeply care about everything. You're it matters. I'm telling you, telling you, telling you it matters. And sometimes that's enough to get a teacher through a day, a week, uh, or to the end of the year, right? Um, so, and, and if you want to get all cutesy and hit it out of the park, go on Pinterest and look up teacher gifts because they have all these clever, ridiculous things like, you know, clever sayings or a way to fold a card around a Tootsie Pop and it says you're the pop in everything that we do. I can't even think of all the, you know, they have the million dollar bars and, and there's that, you know, your teaching is worth a million dollars. Go on Pinterest, find yourself something, but you can do it for under a dollar and under five minutes and honestly change what's happening. Um, and, and don't think for a second, I, I know we all worry that, oh, if we make a fuss, that they'll hold it against my kid. I don't think that ever happens, ever. But I do think it works the other way. When you take the time and you do something nice for a teacher, I do think that translates to your child. I absolutely do. I've seen it happen, even if it's just that you get more patient with that child. You're like, no, I see the parents care and you know there's stuff going on there and you know this child comes from people and i gotta care about this person right i'm telling you a card can do that so uh make sure that you're reinforcing the staff and if there's an opportunity to volunteer between now and the end of the year please do it and even if it's something that sends you out of the classroom like sometimes you volunteer and you go i'm going to go in and i'm going to be speaking and i'm going to see all the things that are happening which is great when you can do that right but sometimes they send you to the copier room and they go, can you copy these things for me? And you go, oh man, I'm just relegated to the copy room and I'm not going to get any intel. Oh no, my friend, because while you're in the copy room, you're going to hear all kinds of things and you're going to have a con There's going to be a teacher in there copying something. You're going to hear conversations. You're going to talk to them about things. They get to know you and you start to get to know who the teachers are for next year.
which is really what a lot about this next part of this part of the year is. So if you get a chance, volunteer. And especially uh, sometime around now, there's going to be that back to school night where you're going to go to the school and you're going to see all the projects that the kids have worked on, right? Um, volunteer to help set up a classroom for that because then you'll be there and you get a chance to see all the little stuff, right? Because on the actual night, you're going to go in and there's tons of parents and they're all crushing the teacher and wanting to talk to them. You go around, take pictures with your kiddo, show them how proud you are. And by the way, moms and dads, dress up for that. Oh my gosh, my husband often is like, oh yeah, that's that thing again and you're going to make me dress up. Yes, dress up for your kids to show them that there is respect for what they do. Oh, it makes a difference, right? But you go in, you take all the pictures, everybody's dressed up nice, you ooh and ah over your kids' work, you tell them how proud they are no matter what because they need that, right? And, and you know, you converse with some of the other parents, but you get in and out as fast as you can so that you can go to the, all of the open classrooms for the next grade that your child is going into. Hot foot it over there. Listen, look at how the classroom is set up. Look at the projects. Listen to the questions the parents are asking, but listen to how the teacher responds and how the teacher talks to their kiddos that are in their room and how the kiddos look at the teacher because you will glean a lot, right? And then when there's a lull and there aren't people, you can, you know, because they'll notice you because you're in the classroom and they don't know who you are. And it's been a whole year and they'll be like, can I help you? And you, you know, hi, we're so-and-so's, you know, and he, you know, he might be in your classroom next year. And then, you know, it's time to read the face of the teacher, right? Because what you're looking for is, does this teacher already know about your child? And what is their reaction to that? Um, because you can, if you're at all intuitive, you can read whether they are already like asking for your child to go into the classroom or if they've heard about your child and they're like, Ooh, I don't know how to deal with autism because those teachers exist. By the way, some of those teachers are ultimately really good, right? But read the room, read the, read what's happening and see what your rapport is with, uh, the child, but whatever talk up the next year to your child while they're there and show them the projects and go look at what they're doing next year. Oh my gosh, look at how fun that is. And look, oh, look, they did this. That's super cool. Spend that time to talk up the next year. And you should notice across different classrooms that different teachers are doing different things. You will know more when you get ready for the IEP that determines which classroom your child will be going into. And you know that they're not going to tell you for sure which teacher you're going to be with. But I will tell you a secret that school administrators would rather you be happy than have you be angry. Makes sense, right? And that there are big things that you want that they may or may not be able to do. But putting you in a specific classroom with a teacher who's really good, who wants your child to be there, that's infinitely possible if they feel like doing it. And if you make a big deal about that would make you really happy to be, you know, with Mrs. Billings as opposed to Mrs. Karposky, you know, because you feel like it's a better fit because of X, Y, and Z, a lot of times you will find if you're being super fabulous and positive and volunteering, that's where you end up with the teacher that you wanted to be with, with the teacher who wanted your kid. Because it's, I, look, I've done it where the teacher is like, well, I'll make it work. Don't do that. I wish I had never done that, right? Um, or the teacher who says, I know exactly what to do. Don't do that teacher either because chances are she doesn't. Every teacher I've ever heard say that did not know what they were doing. Uh, I know all about autism, right? I have a family member that I've met twice. I know all about autism. Yeah, that doesn't end well in my experience. But in any case, uh, so there's that. And then as you get to the end of the year, you're going to see that there are going to be little things that happen that can upset your apple cart. So get ahead of it. For instance, um, there, there will be, uh, they'll, they'll crank out treats for all kinds of occasions at the end of the year. If your child is somebody who is reactive to sugar or artificial colors or flavors or things that have pesticides or things that have milk or whatever, um, then you want to have something and send it to the class um, or to have on campus so that when somebody, you know, a mom shows up and nobody told you that they were going to bring cupcakes, there needs to be something for your child there. 
because that can sink your battleship faster than anything. Either there's a, an infraction and your child eats a piece of candy that has artificial colors and has a meltdown, right? Or your child sits there while everybody else is having something and feels like they are chopped liver. Now, I had conversations with my son about this because we were very particular about his diet. And I would say I left, uh, for a while it was Lara bars because that's something that he could have. Um, only very specific ones because he's allergic to almonds. Um, but um, there were times that I left uh, popsicles that were all natural fruit juice that, you know, how everybody has those things that are, they're the tubes that have the fruit juice in them and they're like um, day glow colors. And it's so artificial colors, right? And our PTA at one of our elementary schools was very fond of, they would crack those out all the time and give them, t well, I found at a specialty food store ones that had natural 100% fruit juice in them that you know didn't have artificial colors or flavors in them and so we kept a box of them in the teacher's freezer and they were wrapped up with my son's name and so if something happened somebody would go and get one and my son would be there with his little uh, you know and it looked different and I would talk to him about that about sometimes your stuff looks different but it's not any less it's not any better but it's what's right for you and he was happy because he had his thing and we also had a deal um, that I would say to him if ever something is given out to the other kids and we don't have something there then you sit there and be happy and know that the minute you get home you get the biggest reward there is so if that happened he and he would be so thrilled he'd be like yippee because they, they would hand out ice cream cones and I didn't know they were handing out ice cream cones right and I'd be furious I'd be like now do they do this Right, but he would come home and he'd be like, "Yeah, they got ice cream cones today, which means I get a new Lego." Right, and we would we would go off to the store and get the new Lego. So that I built in that when things were different and if he didn't get something, he was going to get something down the road. Uh, but be prepared is the better thing. Send some treats to school for your child, um, and the teacher will be like, Phew, because in the beginning I would say to teachers, just let us know. Just let us know and we'll do it. But a lot of times at the end of the year, the teacher's planning, it's last minute. And they would go, oh, I forgot to tell you. It'd be, you know, 10 o'clock at night and they'd go, I forgot to tell you, we're going to have red licorice whips tomorrow. Which you cannot order gluten-free uh, without a six-week <laughs> lead-up time, right? Uh, so teachers just prefer it if you have something there uh, that, that they can give your child no matter what. Um, so take the time to do that. But also, as you get to spring break, and I know, because it's going to be very hard for me this spring break, it's like we all want to just stay up later and say the rules don't apply. It's like the beginning of summer. We're all going to take a break. And so we can stay up till 11.15, everybody, and watch this thing that we want to do or go out with friends or, you know, be at the pool super duper late. But I'm telling you, don't do it. Don't do it. We all need to hold that off as far as we can. And the whole thing, even with the teenagers about having them sleep late, don't do it over spring break because you still have to come back and get through that period of time. And if you mess up the sleep schedule for one week to come back for six weeks, it's going to be rough, 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 rough. But build in reinforcers. Build in things uh, to do in the morning during spring break to get them up and out of bed and wear them out so that they'll go to bed early. So having said all this, the other big tip that I have for you that's a long-term helper is that at the end of the school year, um, when everything is over, anybody who's been fabulous, and I mean fabulous, uh, I know you want to give everybody a gift, right? But And if you have the money to do that, wonderful. Um, but some of us don't have the money at that time of the year to give a gift to everyone. But the gift that you can give to people who've really made a difference and made an impact for your child, the best gift is to write them a letter. A letter that details, and you can say to whom it may concern, this person uh, played this role on my son's team, and they were fabulous, and here is why. And detail it, and then sign it. Um, and then give them a copy and give a copy to their principal and say, can you please put this in this teacher's permanent file? If you don't think for a second that that makes a difference to that teacher and to them getting raises and getting promotions, it most certainly does. 
don't write it for everyone. Save it for the people who are fabulous. And here's, you know, one of them is because then it doesn't water it down, right? But the other thing that it does is that it sh they talk about it. <laughs> in the, you know, in the teacher's lounge, it gets talked about, oh, I got a letter. Uh, from, you know, so-and-so's mom, and they said this, and oh my gosh, and the, people will read it and go, oh, this is so amazing. And now all of a sudden, people want your child to be in the classroom because they want to, good teachers want to get that letter. Come on, right? So do yourself a favor. It will set you up for success for years to come if you write those letters. And believe me, there were people that never got a letter from me and they felt it. You don't, you don't have to say, you know, by the way, you aren't doing a good job. You don't have to. You just don't write a letter. It's good ABA, right? You reinforce for people who are doing a great job and for people who aren't, it's a, it's, it's a non-reaction. Um, you don't have to get upset about it. You just, you know, these people are fabulous. Uh, so that's some uh, tips uh, for parents, for teachers. Oh my gosh. To get to the end of the school year for kiddos who are on the autism spectrum, every time that you want to have a day off and you want to just like let things be different, I want you to remember for the kiddos on the autism spectrum, that's not the ticket. I know everybody wants a letdown, but instead of thinking of a letdown and just showing a movie because it's going to be hard to go back to the work for everybody afterwards, think of projects that are interactive that you can get everybody doing, things that you can take outside, even if it's something that you guys build outside. One of the projects that I love this time of year that a lot of the STEM schools do, and it's not expensive, is that you go and get um, pasta. And you get different kinds of pasta. And if you have a kiddo who's gluten-free and they're reactive, you just get the little slip-on gloves that they make sandwiches with that are still grippy and whatever. But you get like, you know, four different kinds of pasta. And you ask, uh, put them into teams and ask them to build the highest tower that they can um, to see who can build the highest tower out of pasta. And they will find, oh, well, the spaghetti can go inside the ziti and it becomes, you know, and it does this. And, you know, do we have to have a bigger base or whatever? It's a great, great activity. It's better than shutting off and just watching a movie. So get them as involved as possible. And again, go on Pinterest and look for STEM activities for the end of the year and it'll blow your mind. Don't give them the vacation before the vacation. And don't sugar them all up either. That makes it hard for all of the kids. Keep them busy. Um, that's my advice for uh, autism in the classroom. All right. We are going to take a break. I don't have, know how much time we have left out of the show. A few minutes. So we're going to take a break and come back, and we're going to do our mindfulness moment. So stick with us. 